Hello everybody and welcome back to another EDH deck tech idea. Today we are taking a look at Calamity Galloping Inferno. This is a 6 mana 4-6 with haste and due to it being a mount creature it has the saddle mechanic. Settling is an activated ability and you can tap one of your creatures to settle the creature with the settle mechanic and once the creature is settled and then certain conditions are met there will be a few triggers. Calamity has haste and whenever Calamity Galloping Inferno attacks while settled, choose a non-legendary creature that settled it this turn and create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next end step and repeat this process once. What this means is that on attack you will create two token copies of a non-legendary creature that settled Calamity. We are going to build Calamity as a mono red aggro deck, which wants to create a bunch of token copies and most preferably of very powerful creatures. For example, Combustible Gear Hulk, a 6 mana 6 6 with first strike, and when it enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw 3 cards. If the player doesn't, you mill 3 cards, then Combustible Gear Hulk deals damage to that player equal to the total mana value of those cards. If you manage to settle Calamity with one of your Combustible Gear Hulks and attack with it, you can create two token copies of Combustible Gear Hulk and you will also get the ETB trigger. So either you draw a bunch of cards or your opponents will lose a bunch of life because you have to mill a lot of your cards. Or depending on how your opponents choose, they will get a mix of it. We also want to copy Inferno Titan, a 6 mana 6-6 six, six, and for one red Inferno Titan gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals 3 damage divided as you choose among 1, 2 or 3 targets. Of course those tokens that enter with Calamity are already attacking, so we don't get the attack trigger, but we get the ETB trigger to ping for free damage. We also want to settle with Port Razor, a 5 mana 4-4, four, four, and when it deals combat damage to a player, untap each creature you control. After this combat phase, there is an additional combat phase. Port Razor can't attack a player it has already attacked this turn. You probably see where this is going and if you are able to pull this one off, you will have a bunch of additional combat phases. Trumpeting Carnosaur, a 6 mana 7-6 with Trample and when it enters the battlefield, discover 5. For 3 mana and discarding it, it deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker. If you can set a Calamity with this dinosaur, you will get a bunch of discover triggers on attack. We are in mono red and we create a bunch of token copies, so we also have to play Terror of the Peaks, a 5 mana 5-4 five, with flying, and spells your opponent's cast that target Terror of the Peaks cost an additional 3 life to cast. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. Not only is Terror of the Peaks a standalone threat, but if this one settles Calamity and you get to attack with it, you will get a bunch of Terror of the Peaks token copies and ping your opponents down. Due to the fact that we have to sacrifice those tokens at the beginning of the next end step, we also play Stalking Vengeance, a 7 mana 5-5 five five with haste, and whenever another creature you control dies, it deals damage equal to its power to target player or planeswalker. Stalking Vengeance is definitely one of our win cons and can surprise your opponents out of nowhere. Due to Calamity costing 6 mana and all of our other creatures also costing a bunch of mana, we need to ramp quite heavily, but due to being in mono red, we will do that a little bit different. For example, with Plundering Barbarian, a 3 mana 2-2 two, two, and when it enters the battlefield, choose 1, destroy target artifact or create a treasure token. In most cases, we want to go for the treasure token, but even in a late game, we can set a Calamity with this creature to get rid of a few nasty artifacts of our opponents. We also play Patron of the Arts, a 3 mana 3-1 free and when it enters the battlefield or dies, create a treasure token. Either we are able to bring this one out in the early game and get a treasure from it, or in the late game it can also be helpful to accelerate our mana advantage simply by settling Calamity, attacking with it, getting those treasures on ETB and then when we have to sacrifice those tokens we will get even more treasures. Scampering Surveyor, a 4 mana 3 2, and when it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card or cave card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle. This one reminds you of Solemn Simulacrum, and we will feature that in a minute too. And these are exactly the effects that we want to go for. We will play this one on turn 4. On turn 5, we can make our additional land drop to have enough mana available to bring out Calamity, bring out Calamity, settle it with the Surveyor, attack, and get even more basic lands to the battlefield. As I have just said, 
Solemn Simulacrum A4 Mana 2 2 and when it enters the battlefield you may search the library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield, tapped and then shuffle. When it dies you may draw a card. Same effect, on turn 4 we bring out Solemn Simulacrum, get an additional land, on turn 5 we play another land, bring out Calamity, settle it with Solemn Simulacrum, attack, get even more basics and with Solemn Simulacrum we also get additional cards when those token copies die. One of the cheapest creatures that we have in the stack is Willy Goblin, a 2 mana 1-1 one, one, and when it enters the battlefield create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap it, sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And of course we definitely have to play Professional Facebreaker in this deck, a 3 mana 2-3 with menace and whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. You can also sacrifice a treasure to exile the top card of your library and you may play that card this turn. If we settle Calamity with the Professional Facebreaker and get to connect with all of those token copies, we will generate a huge treasure advantage and can generate even more value by sacrificing those treasures for additional cards. Now I'd like to feature a few very powerful artifact creatures that we want to settle Calamity with. For example Clone Shell, a 5 mana 2-2 two, two, and when it enters the battlefield look at the top 4 cards of your library, exile one face down, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. When it dies, turn the exiled card face up. If it's a creature card, put it onto the battlefield under your control. Settling Calamity with this creature card and then attacking will ravage us through our deck, finding our most powerful creatures under those clone shell copies and once we have to sacrifice those token copies we will get a board of powerful creatures. Wormcoil Engine, a 6 mana 6-6 six, six with death touch and lifelink and when it dies create a 3-3 free, free colorless worm artifact creature token with death touch and a 3-3 free, free colorless worm artifact creature token with lifelink. Due to us playing a beatdown deck, life gain can be very helpful for us as we are most likely shields down all the time, so Wormcrawl Engine definitely helps out with that. Meteor Golem, a 7 mana 3-3 free free, and when it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-land permanent and opponent controls. This creature will help us to get rid of some nasty enchantments, artifacts or also creatures of our opponents, and all of those token copies can do the same. Filigree Familiar, a 3 mana 2-2, two two, and when it enters the battlefield, we gain 2 life. When it dies, we draw a card. We have to make sure to never run out of gas with this deck, so drawing cards is definitely helpful. So taking a slightly more chilled turn by using Calamity and Filigree Familiar in a combination will gain us a lot of life and draw us a lot of cards for a more powerful turn afterwards. Just as with Skyscanner, a 3 mana 1-1 one, one will flying and when it enters the battlefield we draw a card. A similar creature is Circuit Mender, a 3 mana 2-3 and when it enters the battlefield you gain 2 life. When it leaves the battlefield we draw a card. And now I want to feature a few artifacts and enchantments that we definitely have to play in this deck. Hazard's Monument, a 3 mana legendary artifact and red creature spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. Whenever you cast a creature spell you may discard a card and if you do draw a card. We are ramping quite nicely in this deck but Hazard's Monument is definitely a must play due to the permanent discount. Flame Shadow Conjuring, a 4 mana enchantment and whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control you may pay 1 red. If you do, create a token copy of that creature. That token gains haste and exile it at the beginning of the next end step. As you might have seen we play a lot of powerful creatures that have powerful ETB effects, so making even more tokens of those is definitely helpful. Stryonic Resonator, a 2 mana artifact and for 2 mana and tapping it, copy target triggered ability you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. Calamity's attack trigger as a triggered ability so we can copy it with Stryonic Resonator and now imagine like getting 4 Terror of the Peaks on attack. Industrial Advancement, a 4 mana enchantment and at the beginning of your end step you may sacrifice a creature which will fit us very well with all of those tokens that we have to sacrifice anyways. And if you do, look at the top X cards of your library where X is that creature's mana value. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. We play Terror of the Peaks on an enchantment, Warstorm Search, a 6 mana enchantment and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. And because we are creating so many tokens, we definitely have to play Idol of Oblivion, a 2 mana artifact and we can tap it to draw a card. Activate only if you create created a token this turn. We can also pay 8 mana, tap it and sacrifice it to create a 10-10 colorless Eldrazi creature token. You want to win more? You get it. We play Sundial of the Infinite, a 2 mana artifact and for 1 mana in tapping it, end the turn, activate this ability only during your turn. We will most likely play all of our gas in our first main phase and in our combat phase, so we feel free to end the turn in our second main phase. 
so we never get to the beginning of our next end step where we have to sacrifice the tokens that we create with Calamity. Alright guys, these were a few cards that I would play in Calamity, Galloping Inferno. Let me know down in the comments below which cards you would add to the deck, which legendary creature I shall feature next, and then I would say, see you in the next one, goodbye guys.